Hello YouTube and welcome to my second tutorial in my series of Game Maker Studio tutorials. Um, this tutorial we will be going over improving what you made from tutorial 1, so if you have not seen tutorial 1, uh, the link to it is in the description if I remember to do it, and I probably will. But, yeah, this is going to be going off the what you made in the last uh, tutorial, so you'll be behind if you didn't watch that one. So we're going to load up what we made in our last video. Straight up here, our game, and right now I'm running two monitors, so I can my move my mouse might move off the screen to do something. That's because I have a second monitor. So what you may have noticed in your last game is that sometimes your character will stop moving like this, or you get stuck on walls. We are going to improve this movement really quick, and it's actually going to be quite simple because we're going to use relative jumping and what you can first start off by doing is deleting all of the release events so you can just select them or just delete them one at a time yes delete all the release events delete them all okay now that we have deleted all the release events what we're going to go into is we're going to go into the um, object wall, delete this, and replace it with the speed horizontal drag and drop, make that zero, and the speed vertical drag and drop. So now there should be two drag and drops in here, both the under the move tab, the speed horizontal and speed vertical. Now what we're going to do is for these four events here, we are going to change them, so you can right click them and hit change, and we're going to change the press left to just keyboard left so now it's just left so change keyboard up change keyboard right change keyboard down so now that we have changed all of the events here from press to just normal keyboards what we can do is we can go into them and delete the move event out of all of these but not the the sprite change one you can leave that there so delete the move drag and drop out of all of them so now what we're going to do is we're going to replace the move events with um, jump to events so what it does is it will jump to a given position that you state so when you press left so this no let me check this event right here that we my mouse is moving over um, this action actually is what it's called so draw me a path <laughs> game maker game maker itself works on a grid this is middle school stuff you see the X and Y axis it works on that but the only difference is Y is flipped so negative Y is up and positive Y is down and the very upper left hand corner of your room is zero zero so I'll show this really quick so we so for example see how my mouse shows the coordinates so right here up in this corner is zero zero down here is ninety six to twenty four it's all points you should learn this middle school junior high whatever it is so to move backwards on the axis on the x left would be on the x axis so to move back we would go a negative number so we're just going to do negative five and now what this will do is it will jump to the position negative five zero this is not right what we have to do is check relative what this does is instead of jumping to negative five zero on the grid it will jump to negative five then whatever y value according to where the player is so wherever the player is is now zero zero if I if you understand that it's more advanced so what we can do is copy and paste this jump event and now we'll go into the right one go into the right and drag it to the bottom doesn't really matter and delete the negative sign because now we're going right which is upwards on the x-axis 
Now we'll go to up. Drag it down. And we'll change the x to 0 because now we want to use the y values because up would be on the y axis. And since game maker is flipped, up is negative. So we're going to do negative 5. And then go to the down and change the negative to a positive 5. And now we can test our game and see if the movement is improved. So we work, the movement works a lot better and it appears that we typed the wrong value in for down. So we're going to have to fix that. We'll go to down and yes we put it on the x-axis instead of the y. So put the 5 on the y. Don't make my mistake. So now the movement doesn't get stuck ever and if you notice you can now walk diagonally and you don't get stuck on walls unless you walk into them so now that we have made our movement a lot better what we can do is we are going to add a collectible and what I mean by collectible for example coins stars whatever you want to call it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new sprite. We'll call it SPR coin. Edit the sprite. File, new, 32 by 32s. Actually, we'll go, we'll change this. We'll make it 16 by 16. So it's half the size, or actually one fourth, if you think about it. And we're just going to make a coin, not green, yellow coin and we'll put a dollar sign on it so now we have a beautiful coin with a dollar sign on it hit the check hit OK and now what we're going to do actually we're going to animate this coin so you haven't used the animation menu yet like I said it'll show all the frames of your sprite here so what we can do is first click this show preview check it'll show what your animation of your sprite looks like. So we can do anim hit the animation tab here and we're going to do a rotation sequence and we'll rotate clockwise. Now we just simply set the number of uh, frames we want in our rotation animation and how many degrees we want to turn. Usually you use 360 degrees but if you want you can change that. So we'll make it 30. 30 frames and this is now our animation, our animated spinning sprite. Let me check. That's fine. Okay. Now that we have animated our coin, we can make an object. So we'll do create object. And now we'll do object coin. That's pair coin. Okay, and now we're going to also add one more object. We're going to add a controller object. Most games have a controller object in them, but the game I wanted to keep simple, so I didn't put one in. So that we'll just call it object controller, and we don't need a sprite for it because it's going to be invisible. So what the controller object usually does is it creates all of the all of the variables you use in your game. So what we're going to do is we're going to simply go add event other game start this one game start now we have this one and now we're going to use our code for the first time ever we're going to go over into execute code it's under the control tab it's right here and it's going to pop up a notepad like um, menu so what we're going to type in is we're going to type global.coins equals zero. So what this will do is it makes the variable global.coins. What global does is it allows the variable to be transferred between rooms or levels. So global.coins equals zero. So this makes it so the when you start the game you have zero coins. So now we can put this in. And now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put in the object controller into all of our rooms. 
So we can just put it anywhere you want, and I usually put it in the upper left hand corner. So we can drag it both up into the upper left hand corner. So now that we have done this, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add a collision event with object player on our uh, object coin. So we're going to add an event collision so when it collides with object player it will do these functions so what we're going to do is we're going to add some code in so the code that we're going to type is going to be global global dot coins plus equal one so what this plus does here is it adds whatever this is if we just did this it will set your coins to one no matter how much you have we want to add one coin so we're going to put a plus there and if you want it to subtract one coin you can put a minus but we want adding so we'll put a plus one and now that we've done this we want to do one more thing we want the coin to disappear when the object the player runs into it so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the main one tab and do destroy instance applies to self so it will destroy itself click OK and now that we have a currency we can put some of them in our room our levels so I'm just going to put some coins in my game so we'll just put some coins in Oop, I'm rotating it sorry they changed how the the room editor works and I'm not quite used to it yet Okay, so now that we have some coins in our level, we can uh, go on to the next room, making my coins even. So now that we've added some coins into this level, we'll go on to the next level and add some coins into it also. Make sure to s you can change what object you place by clicking over into this blank area. So we'll just put a coin here, put some coins here, up there more coins this coins ugly we'll take that out and we'll make a coin room for our last level in our game so now that we've added some coins in the game we'll test our game and we'll pick up the coins and they disappear like they should but there's one problem here how do you tell how many coins you have hmm Billy that's a good question how many coins do you have what we're going to do is we're going to draw use the draw event for the object controller so we can go add event draw draw just a standard draw not draw GUI standard draw and now we're going to add in go down to the which tab is it the draw tab so go down to the draw tab and we're going to draw where's no it's the control tab go over to the control tab we're going to draw a variable. So we're going to draw a variable, and the variable is global.coins. And we'll draw it at 32, no, 32, 32. 32, 32. That's where we'll draw it. Now we can hit OK. And one thing that you're going to also want to do is set the depth of object controller to a negative number. So negative that is work, is OK. Now hit OK. Now we can hit play. And now we see this little zero up in the corner. It's kind of small, so we're going to change the font. And we're going to change where it is. So, since this looks ugly where it is, what we're going to do is we're going to add a change where it's drawn at. And we'll, instead of being drawn at 32 by 32, we'll have it drawn at 0 by 0. Or, no, we'll do 8 by 8. And no, 0. 0 by 0 is good. And now what we're going to do next is add in font. So you can go over to the font folder, right-click, create font. And we'll just call it font O, because it doesn't really need to be changed at all. You can change whatever font you want, but I'm just going to change the size of it to 16. So it's a little bit bigger than the normal. Now we're going to have to tell the object controller what font to use. 
So we're going to go back to the object controller, go to the draw event, go to the uh, draw tab, and drag and drop the set font drag and drop into above the object control and then change the font to font O. Hit OK, hit OK, and now we can test our game and see how the font looks. And it's up in the corner, nice and pretty. Nor normally I'd change this around so it looks better, but this is good enough for now. So we reach are reaching about 15 minutes on this tutorial. Um, you can experiment around with your on your own with Game Maker. And thank you for watching. And I am out.